I do love a cup of tea. Hey everyone, it's Hannah, and today I'm going to show you how to make these really cute crochet candy corns. I decided to make them because they're adorable. This one has become a hair clip. What a successful life it's had already. In this tutorial, I don't show you how to do the basic steps. I have already have a how to crochet beginner's crash course type thing in motion. So I'll pop a link to the video of the stitch that you need to know in the down bar below. Once again, this Halloween video is slightly ironic. They do not sell candy corn in the UK. If they do, I haven't found it. I've had it once in my life, and that was when I was about 17. So, you know, it's been about seven years now since I've had it. My God, I'm old. Let's have a sip of tea to remember how old we are. So I decided I wanted to make crochet candy corn. I'd made some for my friend a while ago probably the person who gave me the candy corn, and I found this pattern on Petals to Picos, so I'll pop a link to the pattern in the down bar below. It's a very lovely blog, quite famous amongst crocheters, so check it out. Anyway, that's enough babbling from me, let's get into the tutorial, shall we? So to make these cute candy canes, what you're going to need is you're going to need double knit wool in white, orange and yellow, and a four millimeter hook. To start with, I've made a slip knot, in my yarn and I'm going to chain two. In the pattern it calls for a magic ring but I struggled to do those so I'm just doing this. So chain two and into the first chain you are going to do six double crochet or US single crochet. And then we're going to join it to our very first stitch. And we're ready to move on to round two. Round two is chain one. And you're working one double crochet into the same space that you joined. And one double crochet in the next chain. Two in the next. So that's one in that stitch. And then we're gonna go back into the same stitch for another single crochet. And then one double crochet into the next two stitches. And then two in the final one. And then join it to your first, one, first stitch again. In the next one we're doing two, two double crochet into the stitch and then one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Then we've got uh, another increase which is basically two stitches in the same stitch. And then we're going to join to our first stitch you can see the point is forming. So now we want to join our orange and to join a new colour all you do is instead of looping your white yarn over when you chain one you loop your orange yarn over to chain one. So that's our your orange yarn over. Just pull that through and then you just need to make sure you pull everything tight again. And at this point you can snip your end off your wool, leave a bit of a bit of a tail on it so you can sew it in and then I like to tie them in a knot together like so and that's our new colour joined and that's our chain one as well and so you want to a double crochet into the same stitch as the join like so and then you've got in each of the next three stitches you're also putting one double crochet In the next stitch you're going to want to increase by doing two double crochet into the stitch. And in each of the next four stitches you're only going to be doing one stitch. And another increase to finish it off. 
and join into the first stitch. So we're going to chain one again and we're going to do one double crochet into the same stitch as join. And in each of the next four stitches we are also going to do one stitch. So one double crochet in the next four stitches. Then we're going to increase in the next one. One double crochet in the next five stitches. Then one more increase. Join it onto the first stitch. So the next round, we're going to start it the same way as we normally do, with a chain one and one double crochet in that first stitch, the same one that we joined on. We can do one double crochet in the next five stitches. And then we're going to increase in the next stitch, and then one double crochet in the next six stitches. And then one more increase before we join it on to the other row. And it's time to join our yellow. I'm going to join it in exactly the same way as I did before. So I'm going to snip my end off here. And pull that yarn through. And knot my two tails together. And so that counts as my chain one. And a, another sing, another double crochet into the same stitch as before, same stitch as we joined in, and then we're going to do one double crochet in the next six stitches. And we're going to do another increase, and then one double crochet in each of the next seven stitches. Then we got another increase, and then join, and then chain one, one double crochet into the same stitch as the join, and then one double crochet in each of the next seven stitches. I'm going to increase again. And then one double crochet in the next eight stitches. And then another increase. And then we're joining on to the row above. Like this. Okay, so my camera battery died, of course, just as I'm on the last row. So on this final round, we are doing half treble crocheting we're half treble crocheting two stitches together each time so that is when you pop your yarn over you go through one stitch yarn over pull through yarn over go through the next stitch yarn over again yarn over again and pull that loop through all five and we're doing that all the way to the end so Yarn over, go through the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on hook, yarn over, four, yarn over, pull through, five, yarn over again, and pull through all of them. And so yes, I'm just going to keep doing that until I get to the end, and then finish off. And then that's that, and then going to join it up to this first one. And finish off. So leave a long enough tail to sew your end up, sew the uh, base up, and then pull that all the way through. 
And that's the crochet part done. Then you're going to grab some stuffing. You probably won't need all of that. And just stuff it, basically. Like so. Grab your yarn needle and thread it, obviously. And sew the base together. Several different ways of doing it. I'll just show you how I do it. It's probably not the right way. I just go underneath two stitches, and then I just go underneath the stitch and the stitch opposite and close it up that way. And then go to the stitch next door and the one opposite it. I kind of like zip it up. Once again, I don't know if this is the proper way to do it. I taught myself to crochet. It gets results. And then you can go back along if you want. And then I like to sew through a little bit and then sew through the stitches. And snip that bit off. And there we go. So the little guy finished. If you want, you can always sew a little face on it using black wool and make a little loop at the top out of ribbon or more wool. So you can hang him. You can sew a brooch back on him so then he's a brooch. You can slip a bobby pin through him. And then there's a hair clip. So yes, there are many, many different things that you can do with your little crochet candy comb. So if you want to add a face to your little guy, all you're going to need is two small beads or you can use toy eyes, either or. I only have gargantuan toy eyes, so I got some four millimeter glass beads. You're gonna need a needle that's small enough to fit through the beads, which I have threaded with some white thread, which you can't see usefully on the white background. You're going to need an embroidery needle and some embroidery floss. This embroidery floss is, I just cut a length of it and then took three strands out and I'm going to use three strands to make the mouth. So what I'm going to do is, I tend to, I don't know if it's the right way to do things, I just go through the back to about where I want the eyes to go, leaving a nice long tail at the other end so I can finish off and pick up a bead, go back through the bead so I'm going through my crochet, back out where it was before and then go back through that bead. And I go down into my crochet and I try to come out about where I want the other eye to be. Like so. If you find that your eye is sitting up a bit, you can always pull this thread at the back. And just make sure you finish it off tightly so the eye sits in a little bit. So then I'm picking up my other bead and sewing that on in exactly the same way. Once again, pulling it tightly. And then finishing off in the usual way, you do a really small stitch. And if you try and keep it on the lighter th thread, I mean, I could have come out where the white is, thinking about it. Um, going through your loop once, and then again, and pulling that tight. And then I just like to sew back through And then that hides it. And then finishing this off in exactly the same way. So to make the mouth, I've threaded my needle with three strands of embroidery floss. So I just go through the back and come out about where I want the mouth to be. Once again, you want to leave a tail. Then you go straight across and then down a little bit. So I've got a little straight mouth. To make him smile, you go back through that loop and then back through where the thread came out of. You don't want too big of a gap. 
and then out the back of the head. And then he's got a little smiley face. Hello, I'm a candy corn and I can now speak because I have a mouth. And to finish this off, I didn't want to do a big ugly knot because it's black thready, quite a lot of it. Um, it's a bit thicker than the white thread and not so easy to hide. I just like to sew back through my stitches a bit, trying to keep it as hidden as possible. And there we have it. It's got a little face. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please feel free to give this video a big old thumbs up. And while you're down there, hit subscribe. Why not? I post two videos a week. One of them's on a Sunday, one of them's on a Thursday. Wow, I said that the other way around. That felt weird. Throughout October, I've been doing spooky Sundays. I now only have one left after this video. If you yourself decide to make anything from one of my tutorials, please feel free to post a picture of it on Instagram with the hashtag the corner of craft so I can check it out for myself. I love to see how talented you all are, how creative you are, and it just means the world to me. Not only am I on Instagram, but I'm also on various other social media sites, so I'll pop all the links in the description box below, along with any relevant information that I think you might need, like, you know, basic how-to with the crochet. Thank you once again for watching, and I shall see you on Thursday for my next video. Bye!